Hello friends, so we are now in lecture 17 and we will introduce you to the employment process. Lecture 17, introduction to the employment process. This is in fact the place where the course proper is beginning. Up till now we had been preparing you to the topic and now we are in the thick of the topic. So, we will be doing these two parts. The first part or the first concept will be searching for employment and writing employment messages that is cover letters and so on and so forth. And the second part of this presentation is strategies in the job search process. So, in the first part we will be dealing with uh, the eight following points. First, a uh, brief description of today's workplace and what today's employers require from applicants. You as an applicant what can you offer? Fourth, very important point, what actually do you want to do regarding your employment? and your career, your profession. What are your short term and long term plans? How will you build your career? And how will you search for that correct employment? What are the recruiting practices of the employers? Employer recruiting practices, these have to be studied and known and you have to make yourself familiar with them and then you can organize your approach to the job search process. And uh, it is a brief glimpse or a reflection of the kind of people you will be working with in today's workplace. Some will be slow, some will be fast, quick, some will be medium paced, but anyway you have seen uh, three, four types of animals in that uh, small clip from Zootopia movie 2016, 2016 it was released. But the point is that uh, this is the case, uh, this is the way our workplace will or is like today. So, today's workplace is credited with the following features. First, it is a global village, the world, the world is a global village and globalization and its effects are seen first of all in the workplace. The workplace is technology driven, hardly have you manual typewriter or uh, old machines which were used in days when we were young. Entire thing is run or driven by technology. Next is the cultural diversity you find at any workplace you enter today. The fourth point is everywhere wherever you see there is too much of information and as a worker you have to sift through lot of this information to find out and to work with that which you need. So, we have then teams and work groups, most of the workplaces are project driven, are run by projects working as teams. It is an era of deregulation and downsizing, shareholder activism, mergers and acquisitions and the point which is most in your favor is the last one here, flexible employment. That is either the companies are keeping the employees or the set of employees for only the tenure of the project completion or the employees themselves are interested in changing the workplace or the companies where they are employed with time and again in a career which is full of career shifts and career changes. What are the requirements of today's employers is the next topic to be thought over. If you are able to see into the mind of the employer, you can thereafter suitably tailor yourself. The first is they are looking for persons who are flexible as well as adaptable, somebody who can, who is not you know like uh, unable to adjust with different kinds of workplaces and work people or the team members, but somebody who is like uh, one size fits all, one person 
who can do all kinds of roles. They are also looking for people who are engaged in lifelong learning. You see, in today's workplace, although the job requirements entail or they require you to be at the workplace from 9 to 5, in actuality it is 9 to 9. Even despite that, what you see is most of the employees are engaged in some other learning. Either they are in some offline course or they are following or they are pursuing some online course in an attempt to increase their academic credentials. The third is the employers are looking for somebody who is able to work in a team and therefore, in employment communication the second topic after CV writing and the cover letter the second topic that is GDs is very important because through the GD the employer gets a glimpse or at a glance version of you, you as a worker who will work in the team when inducted into the organization. And the employer lastly is also interested in strong work records. By weak work records we mean you have small sketchy periods of work, work requirement work record in your academic and your professional career. That is maybe you did uh, one year of M tech and then left it midway or one and a half year of M tech and did not do the thesis writing semester the last semester. Or maybe you have worked two years here then one and a half years here then two and a half years here. So, these are not strong work records. If you work for two years or one and a half year or one, one fourth year in some organization, what will that employer write about you? It is hardly any time to know you and so your references may not be strong enough. Then let us come to further what the employers require nowadays in today's workplace. Everybody wants a leader the first point here, nobody is wanting to employ a loser, all want leadership qualities to be displayed at the workplace. The second is diversified skills that you should have a hard core competency in civil engineering. At the same time you should have some minors in computer science and you should have taken some courses in humanities and social sciences plus you should be a piano player plus you should be fluent in Spanish or French or German or Russian. So, also the employers are looking for varied experiences. It is not that you should always have been working in petroleum accounting. You should also have had experience in accounting or auditing in certain other areas, maybe the accountant general office or a ship or a cruise liner and its accounts department, so on and so forth. And also, because your experience would be at various locations during your career, therefore, normally speaking, it implies that the employer requires multicultural and international awareness from prospective candidates. So, what can you offer to such a long list of requirements by the employer? First of all, you as a person are unique and you have your own USPs, your unique selling points. So, your personal achievements are unique and genuine and specific, they are special to you. Number two is your educational preparation. If it is a job requiring engineering plus accounting, do you have the educational portfolio to that effect? Then the work X for beginners, let us say it is specified that your training period is counted in your work experience, but for higher level jobs or middle level jobs, your work X is important. Extracurricular curricular activities very, very important. In fact, most candidates try to neglect it or have not worked on this aspect of their career, of this aspect of their personality, but remember that studies and games go together. All work and no play makes Jack a dull boy. To make Jack a bright boy, therefore, extracurricular activities very important. You must have in your CV some of these which you can highlight. Then the last one here on this slide is personal characteristics. 
what are your defining features which set you apart as a person from other candidates. So, what do you want to do? By this I imply that how will you be planning your career with uh, a bag full of requirements from the employer and maybe a handful of achievements at your personal disposal or which you are personally responsible and you have earned those credentials and achievements by your own work, self worth and effort. So, think about the type of occupation you would be liking to be doing. For example, a candidate who has done BBA would not like to diversify into being an artist or a freelance artist. So, decide whether you want to continue on the line of management or you want to be a full time artist because you have a natural inclination or proclivity towards art and artistic endeavors. What is the nature of the job you would like to do? Would you think that you are suitable for a 9 to 5 job or do you think that you would be preparing for other competitive exams for better jobs and you would like some time at your disposal. So, you would like a night shift job so that in the daytime you can sleep and make over and prepare for other jobs or whatever or are you the kind of person who can work part time so on and so forth. Then look for the pay package. Suppose a mere BBA who has passed out in today's world from a government or a private management institute is able to get say 15,000 per, per month at the beginning of his or her career. Think about later on in career how much to what level can you go, what is the post and what is the compensation you will be taking home at maybe 10, 20 years from now. Think of the company and whether you would like to work in large sized or middle sized or global or small you know unit kind of company. What is the type of operation the company is engaged in? Where are the locations? Would you like to stay somewhere close to where your parents are settled? Would you like to work in a company which has its office near your native village or native town or are you ready to go abroad or are you ready to go to the far end of India and work somewhere else? And think about the corporate culture you know you can get an idea of the corporate culture of the company or your prospective workplace from the website and other kind of searches. So, building your career means that first of all you work on building your employment portfolio, your CV with extracurricular and academic activities, hinge upon your interim assignments. Nowadays you see that engineering graduates are interested to do internship in every summer. If it is a 5 year dual degree program, you will see that the BTEC students are doing internship in first year summer second year summer, third year and fourth year and final year. So, it is not that the internship is done only in the penultimate year or the ultimate year or the final year of your study. Candidates nowadays are so much interested because this summer internship of two months every year let us say for five years give them five different experience on which they can build, on which they can gloss over for which they are proud because they have got 5 varied experiences. Then workplace skills have to be developed if required you need to attend or enroll in short term courses to acquire workplace skills. One of the workplace skills I could talk about is resilience. In today's generation there is a, a problem with resilience the students are not having that inner resilience it needs to be working in a place where there are so many pulls and pressures from all directions and therefore, there is a need to do meditation, to practice meditation, to be regular at meditation because meditation is an activity or an art which builds up your inner resilience from within. I am now talking about lifelong learning throughout your career, the day you stop learning you start in fact stagnating. 
So, lifelong learning implies that always be engaged in enriching your skills academic and non academic. If you have not learned the piano, there is no age for not learning the piano, you can learn it at any point of time in your career. The employment search how does and what does it involve, how does it begin? First of all you have to decide your career whether you are going to be a manager or you are going to be an engineer or doctor and that is a decision which you take of course with help and support from parents and peers and colleagues. Once you have completed your basic professional degree or certificate, prepare a resume or a CV. Understand the interview process because that is the final stage. In some companies you may only have a direct interview after your CV has reached them. So, for it is instrumental, it is very important that you understand the interview process because it is complicated and the next topic after GD is going to be interviewing. Prepare for the interview, take the interview and if you are selected follow up and accept the offer that ends the employment search. What are the employer recruiting practices you might encounter or you might face in the days to come? The first is that because you are on the receiving end you need to take a proactive step and look inside the company. Study the company, its website, most importantly go through its annual reports, look at the turnovers and read many business magazines as many as possible to build up your information. This is an era where networking is very important. So, try to get in touch with as many people who can help you get recruited and get in touch with professors, get in touch with people in the corporate sector at high placements and try to make them your references, try to make them write your references, have them as your personal referees because one part of the CV is references. In case it is required, there are so many employment agency or job search firms and if you are feeling that uh, your efforts are not bearing fruit or you could do some more because you are not getting the job which is the job to your liking, take the help of employment agencies or job search firms. If required, you can also send unsolicited cover letters with the resume attached these are called forced applications. And of course, be up to date with newspaper want ads. For example, in India we have uh, common publications like employment news, employment weekly. You have websites also higheredcom highereducationjobs.com, monster and so on and so forth. So, apart from the online want ad publications go through the newspapers as well. How do you organize your approach? This is the next topic. First is to go through the business news. At the beginning it might be slightly boring, but once your interest is in this area and once you have a decided aim that you will be working in this sector, in this area at that level. Once you have decided that you will reach this particular level in that company, you can make it a part of your daily routine that you will watch the business news and monitor what is happening in which firm and why. Then of course, you have chosen your specific firms or companies you would like to work in. Suppose you want to work in PwC, Price, Waterhouse, Cooper, then research intensely and in great depth on PwC. Build a network, we have already mentioned it throughout your career networking is going to be very important till the last day till you retire from service or business if you are an entrepreneur. And uh, there is uh, a need to seek career counseling in case your career is not firm. 
say within 5 10 years if your career is not settling down there is a need to counsel there is a need to be counseled and to seek care counseling so that you can take care of the efforts you are doing and you can try to in other words set your career into the right mode references In fact, I am going to start strategies in the job search process part 2 and then we will come to references for the entire lecture. These are the topics we will be considering in this presentation second part. Let us come to the first one. This is a short revision of what we have done and so we can move fast. It might be slightly repetitive at places because we are revising the topics covered in the first half. The first is to build a network of contacts and identify appropriate jobs for yourself. Locate your employer and prepare the application documents which is cover letter and CV or resume. Continue your job search activities. How do you build a network of contacts in more detail? First of all, broaden your circle of friends and get to know your professors personally. So, that with this personal touch you can bank upon their expertise and support to sail you through in your career goals. Meet business executives and keep in touch with them. Make your contacts through internships, summer internships wherever you have worked retain those contacts and work with community organizations. It is best nowadays to be involved in some NGO or non-profit organization activity because these are very much important in your work portfolio. The next is to identify appropriate jobs and what needs to be done on that count. The first analyze yourself and in terms of education, your personal qualities, your work ex and any other special qualifications you might possess for example, piano or uh, a level German so on and so forth. Analyze other outside factors which are in fact responsible for you to get into the workforce. Finding your employer this you can do first of all through the placement center of your college or institute. Most colleges institutes will have a placement cell training and placement cell. Through your network of personal contacts number 3 is classified ads online or offline. Online databases of company addresses and company details are also available on sale on purchase. Employment agencies are there for your service. Follow the web pages of companies and sometimes prospect. How do you prepare the application document? There are in fact two things to be considered. Either write the traditional resume or the paper resume or write the electronic resume or that which is to be transmitted electronically. Number 3 accompanying either one or two is the application or the cover letter. After that you have to follow up on your application process and close the process only when you get a job at hand. There are other kind of job search letters also which we could consider and throughout your life you have to continue job search activities you cannot stop. How do you construct the traditional resume? First of all look at the background facts, what are your strengths, weaknesses, what do you know about yourself? Arrange these facts into groups for example, those dealing with your academics, those dealing with your internship, those dealing with your extracurricular interests, those in dealing with your references, those in dealing with any other aspect which you can put into your CV. Construct the headings accordingly. Include contact information right at the top where it is most visible and uh, importantly placed. After the contact information have a statement of objective or career goals, career objectives. Then present the information which you have arranged properly, organize it better with various strategies so that your CV is strong, write impersonally or in the third person and be consistent in your writing and make your CV or your resume form attractive. 
Here we have a short CV of Jerry Bacon and uh, you see the first part here is his name, below that his address center top justified and in the left hand corner you have objective education relevant courses, a very short in a very short few number of words the candidate has placed his education and relevant courses in context. To move further we come to the important segment on experience in the second half of the first page and here you have the various subsections on experience. He was a secretary till 96 to 98 and data entry clerk from 93 to 96 and file clerk from 92 to 93. This is called the reverse chronological order and he says, he says regarding references we will gladly provide personal and professional references on request. In certain scenarios, in certain situations you might require personal referees as well. So, it is better to keep them in handy. Now, how do you construct the electronic resume? Because the electronic resume will be scanned for keywords by computer machines or computer programs using the OCR optical character recognition software. Therefore, include the keywords which have been found or which find their important place in the job description in the want advertisement. Choose the words therefore, very carefully and present the information so that you are selected. This is an example of a electronic resume of Megan Rose, Rosenblum. This is the address and the keywords are provided right at the outset instead of career objective, because it is these keywords of where he has worked and what he has been uh, dealing with or familiar with, which will fetch him the second stage of the job recruitment process. And education, as far as education is concerned, the candidate puts it in a very short, brief and concise manner at the end stating his major GPA 3.3 out of 4. The candidate moves on to refer to specialized courses which has been completed by an experience is broken into one subsection 94 to present maybe it is a beginner. A brief description of a comma separated list of what he has been involved with, then you have the interest section and then references, interest that is extracurricular or extra academic interests. I would suggest that uh, this is uh, a sample of resume builder and many of these uh, software and programs are available for free and maybe also for purchase. If you have any issues with preparing your own CV as per the, the format suggested or the YouTube videos or whatever have been provided here, you can always go to a resume builder and put all your data, give them all the data and your resume will be readily available for you short time. Now, a last slide on continuing job search activities which states that maintain your resume as the basic format and as and when the situation arises update it and do not move on with one resume for 10 years, 4 years, 5 years. Every year you must be able to add something to your CV, delete some old outdated data which are not required for specific uh, employers and therefore maintain your resume. And to continue your job search activities, the final advice is to read job ads and professional journals. References are on this slide. Thank you for being with me and God bless you.